Today we're playing in an actually winnable FA Cup first round game. We could have a cup run afoot, people. Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 4 of non to Legend. I'm Kev. Coming up on today's episode, we're at home against Chesterfield in the FA Cup first round and then at home against Hemel Hempstead back in the league. Chesterfield, 22nd in League 2, on a bit of an iffy run... It's winnable. I mean, it's difficult because they're still Chesterfield. They're still two divisions above us. But it's absolutely winnable. And I'm getting a little bit excited about what the potential financial ramifications of a cup run could be. Um, admittedly, we're not in the best of form ourselves. We've lost our last two games and find ourselves at the moment outside of the playoff positions, which is a bit of an issue because the board are expecting a playoff finish this year, as are the media. That being said, we're only three points behind Western Supermare and only actually eight points away from top of the table Bromley. So it's quite a tight division. Win three or four games back to back and we're right back up in the mix again. So hopefully a cup run will be exactly what we need to spur us on. And part of me thinks that the players might have had their heads turned by the big game anyway because the FA Cup draw happened somewhere around here. And then we lost two games. So I wonder if they were just all waiting for Chesterfield. But I don't know. Mate, does that even happen in Football Manager? It feels like it does. So this is the team that we're putting out there for the Chesterfield game. We've got Ashmore in goal. A back four of Osborne, Kilgore, Stone and Minahan. With Compton, Gallagher, Ovenden and Henchcliffe in midfield. And then Mills and Robles up front. They're not quite scoring goals at the same rate they were before. Uh, Robles is now 11 goals from 16 games and Danny Mills is on 11 from 14 games. So they're still scoring plenty of goals, but they're not scoring them as prolifically recently. So hopefully today's going to be the day they rediscover how to score goals. I'm just hoping we can capitalise on the fact that Chesterfield are in absolutely terrible form and the fact that we're also in pretty poor form doesn't cancel that out because I don't think we're going to have many better opportunities than this to take a league scalp which is something I've never really done in Football Manager before usually when I'm down in non-league I get knocked out long before we get to this kind of stage of the competition with the with the tantalising possibility of the FA Cup third round not being that far away I mean that is getting ahead of ourselves but Ovenden has just scored an absolute screamer I mean, what a goal that is. He's got no right to do that. He needs to remember he's the Conference South player playing against Football League opposition. He has absolutely no business hitting a football that cleanly. Look at the state of this. Bang. 1-0. Eight minutes in. And if that... I mean, in reality, that should absolutely knock the stuffing out of Chesterfield. They should just be look, And they're getting injury straight afterwards. They should be just looking around at each other. It's going to be one of these days again. We've got no, we've got nothing, there's nothing we can do here, and we should just be massively up for this. So, right now, it feels like there should be an upset a coming, but that's not always how Football Manager works. And there's every chance that the higher quality opposition will come to punish us. And there's an example of it. Their first attack, I think that's their first shot, they equalise from, and I'm just not certain that would have happened. In reality, but what do I know? It's a lumped ball forward, a flick on, and, and then a boot forward. So it wasn't a flick on, it was a header back, and then a boot further forward and one touch finish. Mm. Let's let's hope. Oh, they're going to score again, aren't they? It's going to be the absolute opposite of what I was just talking about. We are going to have the stuffing knocked out of us. We, we had all that excitement of taking the lead, scoring a wonder goal, only to have them score with their first attack. And now we're going to think that there's just no beating them. But hopefully we are going to go and beat them. And Danny Mills almost got tackled by the referee, but plays Compton in, who crosses to Robles in space. And it's 2-1 on 25 minutes. I'm talking an awful lot about stuffing today, but surely now the stuffing is back out of them again. I mean, stuffing. You can tell it's nearly Christmas. It's all I'm thinking about. But, I mean, that's a good bit of football. That's exactly the kind of goal we should be scoring. Danny Mills dropping a little bit deep, plays the ball out to Compton. I think it came via Mills and it dropped back to Ovenden first. But either way, whichever way it went, it went where it was supposed to. It went out to Compton, who crossed in to Mr. Goals himself, Robles, to make it 2-1. And now Compton finds himself on the edge of the area and makes it 3-1. I might be talking about stuffing in a different context altogether in a minute. If I'm not tempting fate too much with that, apparently we've got 
big screen TVs in the corner of our ground, which I've never noticed before. But is that a thing that they have at Twerton Park? I know it's a decent sized ground for non-league. Pretty sure they don't have massive titantrons in the corner of the pitch, though. But I stand... I mean, they've got a picnic area over here. It's a bit of a contrast. Massive TV in this corner. Over in that... There you go. Massive TV over there. Over here, picnic area and a giant football. I'm not sure there's a ground in the world that's set up quite like that. But what do I know? Right. Looks like we're going in at half time 3-1 up, which is better than we ever could have hoped for, really. I didn't mean to hit the space bar there. I wanted to rush the previous screen on. I wanted to look at my half-time stats, but now they're gone forever. I, I realise I could have gone back to look at them, but now they really are gone forever, I think. I don't think there's a way to get back to them from here. But we've had the better of this game. Looking at the stats on here, we've had more shots, more shots on target. They've marginally had better possession, but that's more to do with the fact that they're a better team. Compton! And we shouldn't have a lot of possession. We've had, got nearly 3,000 fans in here today. Which has got to be a. Uh, it's certainly the biggest attendance by a long way we've had since I've been here. But I don't. I mean, I guess it's not close to a record attendance. Compton has just scored an absolute beautiful free kick. It is now 4 1. And I emphasise again we are playing against Football League opposition. And Jack Compton is basically saying, Yeah, I think I'm ready to play in the league now, boss. Um, I'm like 29 or whatever he is. I don't really know why he's down at this level. 30 years old. And I guess he has been in and around the league at various points. Probably shouldn't be down in the Conference South, though, looking at the season he had last year. And he's now trying to show the world that he's ready for one more season. Up with the big boys. Right. Changes. What changes? Um, Osborne. We haven't got a backup left back. Stone. Batten can come on for him. Henchcliffe, it was a bit of a coin toss whether we had Henchcliffe or Otim in the team to begin with. So we'll just make that change. We'll leave it there for now. We don't need to don't need to change too much. But I am looking cautiously at Danny Mills, who's only just recovering from a little injury that he had. Fitness-wise, he looks like he's roughly in line with the rest of the squad. But the game is won at this point. We don't need to risk further injury to him. Especially if he'd have scored there. He was coming straight off. He wasn't even going to get to kick off again. Um... We might take him off regardless, bring Doty on. Just as a bit more of a link-up man. I mean, this game should be over at this point. If Chesterfield find a way back in now, I don't understand how they're relegation threatened and are always losing. I mean, that is a fluke of a goal, though. And that's just the sort of thing that could drag them kicking and screaming back into the match. They've now had two shots on target in the entire game. If they have two more in the final ten minutes and score them both, that's just dirty. But, I mean, that wasn't a shot, was it? That's a cross that he's completely mishit and it's looped in. Uh, right, five minutes to go. Still a two-goal lead and we've got a free kick. Minihan crosses in. and Has Kilgore been fouled there? He has. We've got a penalty. And this should just wrap everything up at this point. And it's going to be Compton to take for a hat-trick against league opposition. He's not our normal penalty taker, but this is the... We can change him if we want to, but I'm not that much of a monster. Um, let's let him get his hat-trick. It's saved. What an idiot. Why didn't I change? It's the FA Cup. We've got finances to think of. Forget the romance, Kev. I don't even know who our normal penalty to take is. Probably Minahan, because he takes all the other set pieces. In fact, Compton does. Compton might be our normal penalty taker. Forget everything I just said. He should have taken it, and he should have scored it as well. And that is full time. We didn't get much of an end-of-game highlight there. But... Forget all that. The important thing is we've just knocked a Football League team out of the FA Cup. We're in the draw for the second round. And now it all starts to get a little bit exciting. Let's fast forward to see the FA Cup second round draw. And we are in the hat. Here we go then. Oh, look at some of the... Blackburn, Nottingham Forest. Leamington. But we're in there. I mean, imagine Forest. Forest would be amazing. Who else is in here? What are the big teams? Bolton, Bristol Rovers would be loads of fun. Um, anyone else big? Nuneaton are still in it as well. Posh are still in there. Forest, McDonald's, Southend, Sheffield United. There's so many enticing ties that we could get in this next round. I don't know what I want more. A fun tie now or Nuneaton or someone that we can beat at this stage. Leamington so that we can get into the third round. Right. Don't want that one. Good. Don't want that one. Good. Don't want that one. Good. Oh, don't want that one. Good. 
This is getting repetitive already. Don't want that one. Good. Uh, that one would do. I could live with that. And that is how you do an FA Cup draw. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Let's draw the rest of the teams and go and play our next game. <laughs> wow. I could do that another dozen times and it will never work as perfectly as that. I'm just going to go and get buy a lottery ticket. I'll be back in a minute. Two changes for the Hemel Hempstead game then. One in terms of personnel. One a slight tactical tweak. Oh, Tim comes back in for Henchcliffe on the right wing. We made the change in the middle of the match. Henchcliffe's not got it, I don't think. But we've swapped Robles and Mills over up front. And it's mainly because, apparently, they're both as good as each other at poacher. But Robles is slightly better. There is a deep line forward. So we'll try them that way round. See if we can get Danny Mills scoring goals again. Because although Robles is still knocking them in occasionally... And, I mean, Mills has actually already got a better goals per game ratio than Robles on account of him playing slightly fewer games. But I just need to get them back scoring at goal a game again. So let's try swapping them over and see if that makes a difference. If Robles now has a terrible game, we'll swap them back again because at least we know Mills can do it as a deep line forward, which Robles might not be able to. But it could be a stroke of absolute genius. Or I may have used up all my strokes of genius on this episode with predicting FA Cup draws. Right, let's let's get stuck in, lads. Let's establish ourselves on this game. It seems to be... I don't really know where this highlight's going. It's a lot of back and forth in the middle of the pitch, and I don't know which end it's going to break out into. I think it's probably going to turn into a, a Hamill Hempstead attack. But Stone intercepts, so it hasn't. So is it our attack? Oh, ball over the top for Mills. Robles is in and should have scored. Hmm. That was a long build-up to what, in the end, was just a ball over the top. Right, oh, Tim, now to Mills, to Gallagher and Ovenden, and Mills wasn't really awake to that, was he? I wonder if both those chances you just had, would they have gone in if the strikers had been the other way around? Would Robles have been awake to that pass? Would Mills have been better placed to finish the one before that Robles missed? Hmm. Huh. Right, Robles has now dropped deep. Ovenden plays it over the top to where Robles should have been, but he wasn't there. Stone intercepts, though. And now it's Mills to chase. He can't... Oh, he does get there in the end. He muscles his way through and heads it across to, Mil to Robles, who tucks it away. Now, I actually think that's a goal that wouldn't have happened if it had been if they had have been the other way around. Because I don't think Robles wins the ball here, where Mills does. And I don't think he heads it back, because he's not tall enough. So, there you go. Kev's tactical genius wins the day. Perhaps they are better off that way. <laughs> I don't know. I think the bottom line is they both want to be the poacher and we need to figure out a way to get the best out of both of them. And neither of them can really do anything else, which is a bit of a problem. Can we play with two poachers? Or is that asking for trouble? Right, Compton cross to Mills, who scores. And they're back scoring a goal a game again. The, the reason we swapped them around was to get this to happen. It's now happened. They're going to play this way around for a little while until they stop scoring, and then we'll swap them back again. And, I don't know, perhaps that's all we need, just to inject a little bit of life into the partnership every now and again, swap the swap the terms of it around. And someone mentioned in the comments the other day the height difference between Mills and Robles when they stand next to each other when they're celebrating a goal. It is magnificent. There must be nearly a foot between them, and it is just brilliant to look at. Right, Ovenden, that's really poor control from Ovenden. And he's, he's given... I mean, that guy's name doesn't look finished. Um... How would you... Is that re, re? Re? I need to look at what his name actually is in a minute. Because I've never seen that as a name. Apologies if I'm offending any re, res who are watching. Um, is Mills getting sent off here? Um, he might be. He is. A shocking two-footed lunge, apparently. Didn't see it myself. Right. I don't really want him to be a poacher up front on his own. I might just leave him as a deep line forward on support. Just carry on as we are. I know we've got a lot of the game to play with 10 men, but we are two goals up. So perhaps we just shut up shop a little bit without actually telling him to shut up shop. I want him to work it out for themselves. And Jack Compton, he's not interested in shutting up shop. He wants to go and grab a third, which is exactly what he's done. And as of right now, we are back up into the playoff spots again. This could be the most successful episode of non league to Legend yet this year, if we manage to hold on to this. I mean, it's going to be a bit of a shame that Danny Mills is going to be serving a suspension. Right, this guy is called Re. Joe Re. Okay. Is that short for something? No. 
I stand corrected. Let me know if you two are a re or re. I mean, how do you say that? I, I assumed it would ex at least be some kind of extravagant name from a foreign land. But no, he's, he's English. He's just called re. Fair enough. Right, into the second half then. Eventually, there we go. So, confirmation over there that we are back up into the playoff spots right now. And only six points off the top of the league. So, assuming we can hold on today. I mean, if we're within if we're within six points at the top of the league at the halfway point of the season, one cannot help but dream. Um, we would still be very happy with a playoff finish. Even if I'm not even that bothered about winning the playoffs. I just want... Oh, this is our settling in season at Bath. If we finish in the playoffs... And, even, and don't even go up. That'll be fine. Anything above that will be absolutely delicious. Right. Let's make some changes. Oh, Tim, not playing very, 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 very well. <laughs> not very, very well. But we can just swap Compton over to the other side. Bring Fixter on. Who hasn't played for a little while. We still don't have a spare left back, which is a bit of a problem. Or a spare right back. Although Kilgore can go out to right back, can't he? So I'll bring Batten on. Put Kilgore out there. I'm tempted to just make my third change now. I'm going to bring on Doty for Robles, I think. And should I just do that? What does he want to be? No point making him a playmaker, but let's just have a have a go at this strikerless lark that people talk about. We'll go to standard. And that might be how we gave away the game, if you're ever wondering. But it just seems to make sense to drop back a little bit. We don't need any more goals at the moment. We just need to stop them scoring more goals or any goals. Right, Fixter intercepts. Osborne plays it forward to nobody because we've got nobody there. That might be where the problem stems from. We need to move Doty up front. Can we cancel the changes? I think we might still be able to cancel the changes. Um, can we cancel the changes? I've never used this cancel the changes button yet. And I don't know if they've been made yet. Is that Doty or is it Robles? I think the changes have probably already happened. Can we not cancel him after the man's already on the pitch? Ah, <sighs> right. Put him up front then. Just so we've got an outlet. Because we played a ball up to him and he wasn't there. And then they scored a goal. So, that's a problem. Oh. Kev, Kev's, tactic, Kev's trying to be clever, tactically. People ask why I don't ever try and close down a game. Why I don't ever try and hold on to a win. It's because whenever I do... I do it wrong and <laughs> we end up letting the team back into the game by me meddling. And that's exactly what I, I can feel it coming today. I'm tempted to go back to control because it was working. If they score here, we are absolutely going back to control. Because five minutes of a tactical change to try and hold on to a three goal lead, leading to conceding two goals, means the change didn't work. I'm certain that's what it means. Oh, why wasn't Doty in there putting the challenge on for that? We could have had a fourth. And then I could have stopped whinging. Oh, they're... They, I mean, they're just knocking the ball around. So we're not getting the tackles in or anything. Mm. They're bringing a bug on. At fullback, by the looks of it. H-bug. Right, it's all quietened down again a little bit now. Being, I mean, I'm sat with my arms crossed. I'm, I'm being defensive. This is my... I'm using body language to show the team how I want them to play. But hopefully they've not got enough time to get back into it now, even if they score here, which they're not going to, because this time the lump forward lands on Doty's head. He only flicks it on and delays the inevitable ball back. But that flick on might have been crucial because now we get the ball back, the chance to hump it up there again, and hopefully Doty wins it again. It doesn't matter because the final whistle's gone. We've won both matches on an episode for the first time in ages. We're back up into the playoff spots and we're in the second round of the FA Cup with a big tie against a team who've won it in the last 10 years. Just, just, but they have. So it's about as big a draw as we could have got. Everything is right in the world of non-leader legend today. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for brand new Football Manager videos at 4pm and 9pm every single day. Thank you very much for watching.